Hey friends, today I'm going to show you some awesome page transitions using Selkit. So here I'm just using the regular Selkit demo project so we can emulate a real project and don't have to set anything up. So just create a new Selkit project if you want to follow along and select the demo option. As you can see, this is all right, but it's kind of vanilla, right? So how can we spice this up? First thing I'm going to do is open the layout. So I'm going to press Ctrl P inside the project. Then I'm going to start typing layout. Let's open the root layout. So basically what you're going to do here we have to use this layout and here is a slot where every page goes right. So you can say, hello, and this is going to show for every page. And basically in Svelkit, if you didn't know, every page is basically a component. So if we can animate components mounting and unmounting, we can do the same thing for pages. But how can we do this, right? We have to first know when the navigation happened and then we have to somehow mount and unmount this. So hmm, how do we do this? Well, we're going to learn a couple of neat tricks, but first let's see how we can see when the page changed. So we can use the page store. I can say import page from, it's going to be dollar sign app, and it's going to be stores, I think. So let's just do it like this. And then I'm going to use this snippet pre, just so we can see what is inside. And we have to prefix it with the dollar because this is a silky store. So this is just syntactic sugar, so we can subscribe to it. And now we get something interesting. We get all the information about this page so we can see route ID. And now when we navigate, we can see the ID changes to about, then it's Swirtle and etc. Even we have some other options like the URL. So for example, it won't show here. Let me just do a console log. So I can say page URL and we can get even more options. If I just open the developer tools, control shift I, let me just save this. And now we can see for the URL, we have host, host name, ref origin, and we're interested in path name, right? When we change this and if the console log updates, we can do this. It's going to update. And now we're also going to see that the path name update. But how can we create and recreate these blocks? Thankfully in Svelkid, you can use a key block like this. So you can say key, and then you can give it the value. When this value changes, whatever is inside of here is going to get destroyed or unmounted, and then it's going to mount it back again. So that's how we can mount and unmount pages in this case. And what are we going to use for the value? We're going to use, of course, page, and then you can use route ID, or we can say path name like this. And now I'm going to show you what the problem is with this approach. So right now there's nothing going on, but we need to add a transition. So how do we add a transition? We can just add an element. And now we can use a transition from cell. We can say transition. We're going to import fly. So I just pressed enter, and this is imported at the top. Sometimes the import here is weird, so keep attention if you're doing an auto import. It looks fine right now. And then we can just say, let's just say that x is going to be minus 200. And let's just save this. And now, since we're going to update this each time, the key block is going to get destroyed and created again. So let's see how this works. Awesome, but can you notice a problem? Pay attention how we're at home, and let's just make it more obvious. We can say duration, two seconds. So what's going to happen, this happens too late, right? Our component is already going to be mounted. So what's going to happen is the about page is going to go through the out transition and then in transition again. So let's see what happens. You can see it transition out and then it transitions again. Ah, oh, that sucks. So what do we do now? Well, basically this is why this method doesn't work for using the page store. What we have to do is know that the page changed in advance and we can do that using a layout page, so we can just send it as a prop, again, the same path name, and then this is going to work fine. All right, so how do you do that? Well, I'm going to go to the project, source, routes, and now we can create a plus layout TS or plus layout server, which one you pick doesn't matter. So we can just say plus layout TS, and now we're going to export the load function, export load function, where we get also actually, it's export function load, and now we can destructure the URL, which is the same thing as we saw from the store. So then we can return a URL, which is going to be the URL. And what we want from the URL? Path name, right? Same thing we used before. So right here we can go and we can delete this. Let's just remove all this code. We don't need this anymore. So now we're just going to take the prop, export, let data. And now we can change this to be data URL. All right, so let's save this and let's see. This already looks a lot better, but as you can see, here is a problem. Because in Svelte, the transition is going to play in and out both, you can see they overlap. 
All right, so how can we solve this problem? And basically you can solve this easily. You can just say in, for example, fly. And now the duration, since it's two seconds, give it a delay, which is going to be also two seconds. And now we can also specify an out fly and we can say duration again, two seconds. We can save, of course I put the wrong in. We don't want the curly boys. We can just do it like this and then let's remove this. And also let's add equals, right? <laughs> so we can just save this. And now you're going to see, there's going to be a delay for the intro animation. So if you go to about, ah, you can see, ah, beautiful. So now it works. Of course, this is really slow. So let's put it uh, something 300 milliseconds. And that's really awesome. So you can see if we go to the about, the about is going to show. And we can also make it so, for example, if we enter right here, it's going to go from the left when we enter. But let's say we want to exit on the right, we can say here x200, let's say this. And now this should go to the right and we should get home from the left. And how awesome is this? As you can see, here is some jank also on the page. So there's probably styles in here, in the body, let's see. So for right now, you can set something like overflow hidden, save it, and then you won't get this jank anymore. All right, that's awesome. But I also want to show you how you can spice this up and create your own custom transitions. So let me just close this. We don't need layout anymore. So basically custom transition functions are basically like Svelte actions, but they return a special transition object. So you can create whatever transition you want. So let's create a transition where, for example, this element when it enters is going to scale from the left and when it exits is going to scale back to the right. So how do we create a custom transition in Svelte? Well, basically we can just go here and now we can say function, let's name it scale. And now this is going to take in a couple of things. It's going to take a node, which is going to be the element itself. So that's the reference to the element. And now it's going to take some options or parameters. We can destructure them. We can just say delay, duration and easing. And we can export a default easing from CellKit. So it has a lot of easings you can pick from. Let's pick something like cubic in. And this is going to come from import cubic in from Svelte easings, I think. Yeah, easing. So we can point like here and we can set delay to be zero, duration default 300 milliseconds. And then we can set it to default an empty object. And we're going to look at the types a bit later. Let me just say language TypeScript. Awesome. And also another parameter that you're always going to have is a direction which Svelte is going to do for you but we can just destructure it from options. We can give it a default bulk because the value is in, out or both. And we can also set it to a default object. All right, so let me show you how simple this is. Basically, the only thing you have to return from this is a special object that has the delay, it has the duration, easing, and now Svelte uses CSS. So this isn't even JavaScript, so it's very performant. Svelte is going to create a CSS animation from this and you only have to pass it a CSS function which is going to take t, which is means time. It goes from zero to one. It's really, it's not the duration of your transition, but it's just going to track when it starts and when it's done. And basically this magical number, t zero to one, you can also apply easings to it, which is just some fancy math. And that's how you get also easings and etc. So the rest here is just regular CSS, right? So this is beautiful. So we can just say, we can use the new CSS property scale. So we don't even have to use transform. And then we can use template literal. So this is going to go from one to zero. That's it. And then we can spice it up by using transform origin. So we can say center, center, which is the default. Let me save this and let's use this transition. So we can go here, we can say scale. Now we don't need X anymore. And we can keep the rest. Because if you didn't know, that's how all of these Transitions in Svelte also work. They're basically implemented like this, even in the source code, which is really awesome how simple it is, considering you might be thinking how Svelte is this complicated thing. But even the source code for these auto transitions is relatively simple and easy to understand. All right, so now basically we didn't do anything special here, but now when we transition, you should see it should just scale. But this is really not what we want, even though if it's a cool effect. You can also do cool things like, let me just remember, elastic out. Let's see, elastic out. So this is going to be springy. 
Boing. <laughs> you can see like this. You can have a lot of fun and give a personality to your site. But yeah, let me just switch back to what we used in Cubic. And you can also, let me just look, Svelte easings. I think there's a REPL with all of the easing function visualizations, so I'm going to link that in the description. Give it a second just so it loads. Oh, this is a cool one. I didn't know about this, but I was like thinking about another one, Ease Visualizer, I think. That was it. Yeah, from the official Svelte site. Give it a second. Yeah, so you can see here you can pick whatever you want, easing out. Let's see, ease sign, cubic. As you can see, these are all just math functions that apply to that zero to one scale. So that's how you get this easing, which is really cool. So I'm going to link that. And of course, everything is going to be linked in the post. All right, but what is a cool thing that we can do here? So how can we transform origin, say, okay, go from the left and then go from the right. So basically, we can use this direction here. So we can map the origin. We can do something like this. We can say const origin. And now we can just give it values. We can say, okay, when you're in, it's going to be center left. When you're going to be out, it's going to be center right. Or actually, let's just say bottom, not center. And then the default, which is going to be both, is going to be center, center. All right, so how do we use this? Well, simple. Let's go here, use a template, and now we can say origin, and let's pass it a direction. How awesome is this? Okay, so now we can do this, and now let's see. Oh, but of course I'm silly, and as you can see, one downside is you really have to pay attention what you're typing here. So this is transform origin. And if we go here, we can see, oh, it goes to the right, starts from the left. Uh, how cool is this, friends, right? Oh, you can have so much fun. Awesome. All right, but let's spice it up. I'm going to show you something a bit more awesome. So to end it off, let's create a fun effect. Instead of scale, I'm going to right click. I'm going to rename. <laughs> let's name it flush. And then I can remove origin, since I'm going to use this. And we can also use rotate. And we can use the turn value in CSS. So we can say T turn. So this is going to go from one to zero, which is going to be 360 degrees, right? So let me just save this. And now I'm going to say that this should be one second here. Let me do it like this. And then if you can see, now we're going to get this effect. And I also prepared a curious sound effect. <laughs> so we can also do this. We can say direction. If it's going to be out, then I'm going to play flush. And now when we go to home to about, how beautiful is this friends? Another way how we can place this sound, since we have already this custom transition, we don't have to use it, but there's also on intro transition and start, you can also play the sounds or do whatever you want here. As again, you can read this more in the Svelte documentation, but how awesome is this? So now we have custom transition in Svelte. You can impress your friends and co-workers. <laughs> the only thing left is you can abstract this into a Swell component. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the sidebar routes and you can create this inside lib wherever you want. I'm just going to create it here so we can say transition Svelte. Let me just close this. I'm going to copy this part over. So we're going to do it like this. Let's add a script. And now we just need the key. So we can just use the key here. And then we can also export let duration. And we can have 300 by default. Actually, I can do it like this. So now we can go to the duration. We can leave it like this. The delay should be the amount of the duration if you want to avoid that mistake, right? But of course, depends what you're doing here. Let me save this. And now let's also take flush so we can go here which we can also store in a separate file if you want i'm going to store it here for fun let's see what else are we missing we can also take this pour the sound from here we're also going to need cubic and fly but you're not using fly right so you can just go here let's remove fly let's save it like this so we can remove all of this code we can remove this and now we can go here. We don't need this block anymore. So this is just going to be slot like before. And now we can just import. Let's see if it's going to autocomplete. Transition. Awesome. So we have lib transition from Svelte. And we can just 
leave it here. You can name this whatever you want. I like to be descriptive and say page transition. So we can go here and name it page transition. Let's wrap it like this. And now it's going to want, let's see, the duration and the key. And the key, of course, is going to be data URL. And what else did we say? Duration. Yeah, so we can give it a duration of one second to override everything. And now let's see, this should work. How beautiful is this, friends? Chef kiss. All right, so that's it, friends. Let me just show you the types for this. If you're curious about this, if you don't care about TypeScript, you can leave, right? But let's also just give this a string. So this really isn't that bad to type. We just need a type of params and options. So you can say type params. You can also be more specific. You can say flush params. So delay is going to be optional. It's a number. Then you have a duration, which is again optional. And now you can find this by just spelunking through the Svelte code. So Svelte exposes this easing function you can import. So you can see from Svelte transition. So that's basically it with params. So we can do it like this, save, and now this should work great. And we can also give it a return, which is going to be another type that Svelte exposes. It's going to be transition config, so we don't really have to type this function. Now it knows about t. And also, if you didn't know, you can return u, which is the opposite of t. So t goes from 0 to 1, and u goes from 1 to 0. So it's basically opposite of that. Now we have the params, and now we just need to type the options, so these directions. I couldn't find the exported type for that, so you can just do options, direction, which is, again, going to be optional. So there's in, out, and you have both. And yeah, you can also use this if you have an option object here. So you can just say options, and save this, and that's basically it. So now we have this neat function we can reuse. Our beautiful transition is working as extended, and yeah. <laughs> Alright friends, so don't forget to like and subscribe, you can find my Patreon in the description, and don't forget to join the Discord, and as always, thank you for watching, and catch you in the next one. Peace!